Okay. Ms. Mouse, is there anyone? Michelle Kushner. Hi, my name is Michelle Kushner, 1106 Fetch It. I'll keep this short and to the point. Government should be more like families regarding budgeting. When a new or unexpected expense arises in the family, decisions are made on what less important spending should be, can be replaced. So the key here is to prioritize, and I think I've heard that mentioned several times by several people. Taxpayers are not a bottomless piggy bank that you can raise taxes every year. Teacher pay increases are important this year. Find current spending that doesn't return a good result and reduce or cut it. This county has many fixed income citizens. When you raise taxes, they have to decide where that money will come from. Not go out to eat as often, not travel, not visit relatives, uh, or maybe hold on to a car, to an old vehicle a bit longer, and hope that it keeps running. Government should be able to do the same thing. Thank you for listening. Dennis David. Dennis David, 305 Kendall Court, Front Royal. Uh, everything I was going to say has already been said at least twice. So I'll just make it short and sweet and say, I think five tax increases in a row is enough. Give us a break, vote this one down. Thank you. 
Again, I have two kids. They I live in Warren County. They go to Warren County schools. I have two little kids. One is graduating this year, so I'm not counting her. Um, average teacher salary is $45,000 a year. Yes, somebody mentioned that. So I ran the numbers. So if average teacher salary is $45,000 a year, and they're going to get 3% increase, 3% increase will give teachers $1,300 a year additional salary, okay? Out of that $1,300 additional salary, teachers will need to pay taxes, okay? The tax will be about 10% income taxes on federal level, 5% on state level, it's 15%. Then also teacher will pay FICA unless they contribute to the Warren County Pension Fund. Anyway, the taxes will be about $300. Out of $1,300, 300 will go to your taxes. Teacher will be left with $1,000. However, let's not forget that teacher is going to pay that additional increase in real estate taxes. That we just calculated will be about $400, okay? So out of $1,000, teacher will pay $400. I'm t again, I'm taking my house that I just sold, and I, I saw the real estate value for it. So if I would live in that house, out of $1,000, yes, I pay real estate tax $400. I have left in my pocket only 600 bucks out of all this 3% increase. So 600 bucks divided by 12 months. What do I have left in my pocket is $50 a month. Now I want to ask the board, will you be able to save teachers in this, teachers in this county by pay, giving them extra 50 bucks a month? I'm not against increasing taxes. I am not against increasing teachers' salaries, but I am against this budget. I am voting for increasing teachers' salary with my heart and my soul, but with my pocket, I am voting against this budget. I hope you all support me. Also, young lady in the pink dress, I love you, I will vote for you, and if you need my accounting expertise, I'll be able to. <laughs> I'll be able to help you. <laughs> James Gent. Good evening. My name is James Gent. I live at 200 Kendall Court, Front Royal. I noticed a trend tonight through here that you people have lost the confidence of your electric people. You're going to have to get it back some way. 6% is not going to do it. Mr. Stanley can run all the numbers he wants to, but it's any, like any other accountant. It's whatever you want it, the program to say, you can make it say that. 900 teachers in, in Loudoun County versus 42 in Warren County. Come on, give me some facts. How many teachers are there in Warren County versus how many are there in Loudoun? Why did the teachers leave in Loudoun? I don't disagree that the teachers need the money. I agree with what you just said in the last one. What you're proposing is not enough to make them stay. You're going to have to come up with something that does gain the confidence again in this corporate. My feeling is that everybody in this room who has been here and has voiced their opinions needs to get out, get that apathetic voter out there, and change what they, can't, what they want to. This board has been there. I've known to seen most of you out here for the last eight, 10 years, 12 years. I think it's time for a change. I think you older folks in there need to get out and see what the real world is. Majority of the people in Warren County right now are working in the federal government. You talk about a 3% raise out here. Do you know what the federal government has gotten for the last couple of years? If you averaged out the last five years of what we in the federal government got, it comes to about 
I would say somewhere close to about 0.01% increase. That didn't help us with the state of the economy. You're doing the same thing here. Now, you're saying taking a 6% increase in this, in this budget that you've got, but you're giving the teachers a 3%. Doesn't jive. Doesn't, doesn't work to me. You're not giving anybody anything. I'm not a politician. I, I wouldn't want your job for anything. I understand it. My, grand, my stepdad was the chairman of a smaller community. You getting calls all hours of the day and night. But as he said, I took the job knowing what it was. I took the job and enjoyed it. He did his homework. We were here, my last encounter speaking up here, half of the board did not understand hotel regulations in this county. I don't, I'm wondering the same thing about after seeing the EDA, if you actually look at anything that's been done. You have a planning commission, Mr. Rinaldi is part of it. If they're not doing their job, fire them, get new people in there. I look at that list of how many buildings we own. If I were in private property and I had a list that long and was, had as much debt as you're saying we've got, that we can't make up money without getting it from our parents to do it, I think we need to look at our budget. We need to bring it back within reality. I can't run my, my credit card up $15,000 over, over what it limit is and survive. This county can't survive continuing that way. You need to get a better handle on what's going on in the county. Thank you. Zach Logan. Good evening. Uh, thank you, members of the board, for holding this hearing. My name is Zach Logan. I live at 382 Hilltop Court in Front Royal. Uh, Twelve years ago, I was looking for my first teaching job. I turned down offers in other areas because I wanted to work in the same schools that my family has attended, taught in, and supervised for four generations. I'm glad I did because it's here that I met my wife. We started our family and we will proudly send our daughter to school. With the network of family support and uh, good mentors, I've made early career decisions with my heart rather than my wallet. Most of my teaching colleagues have not had that luxury and they're not here anymore. I'm here tonight because I would like for loyal and experienced teachers and other county staff to receive the proposed salary increases for next year. I'd like my daughter and other children to have teachers with the wisdom and practical know-how that comes from experience. I would like for all public servants affected by this budget to have greater peace of mind and financial security. I want to live in a community where we look out for each other, where the prevailing belief is that a rising tide lifts all ships, not every man for himself, sink or swim. I believe this issue this evening is about more than taxes and salaries. It's about a vision for the type of community we want to have. Let's tell the folks who serve our school community and those who ensure public health and safety that they are important. Let's tell them to work here longer than what it takes to build a resume and move elsewhere. That they should move here, live here, raise a family here. Let's tell our kids that we value experienced and loyal public servants. Though we strive for the best, we all make mistakes. Things in our lives and the life of our community don't always run smoothly. 
but our best days are still ahead of us. No one is happy with what's been in the news, but that should not derail our continued progress. I'm asking you to side with the folks who will choose to see past their anger, keep an eye on the future, and continue move, moving our community forward. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Jason Poe. Good evening, I'm Jason Poe, 97 Passes Manor Drive. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, thank you for taking this time tonight to uh, hear the few words that I have. <clears throat> like others, I, had a, I got a script, however, I'm going off script. Some of the comments that I heard um, just prior to me stepping up have troubled me, troubled me as a public service guy and as a volunteer fireman. I wanna thank you, the board, for your commitment to the opioid epidemic, first and foremost. I want to thank you for your, um, your efforts in our school resource officers in voting for that. Today's school shooting did encompass a school that was uh, K through 12 in the same building as the high school. The partnerships that those school resource officers develop with those children are unprecedented. They are absolute role models for those kids. That vote last year was a vote um, to increase taxes for the right reason. And for last point, our safety and security of our kids. I'm sure there's many in this room that are affected by the opioid epidemic. I personally am, and I'm not embarrassed to, to talk about it. What I will say is the words that come out of that gentleman's mouth are uncalled for, unprofessional as a volunteer fireman, in which he was. And I hope he never gets back into one of our systems again. Because as, how do you respond and help somebody that you consider it's God's calling of doing away with them because they choose to be an addict. No mother chooses to stay away from her children. They don't choose to do that. Consciously, that's, un that's unfathomable to me. It's a problem when you're an addict, and it's our responsibility to help. It's not our responsibility to to pick them up and give them everything in the world, but it is our responsibility as public service agents and the Board of Supervisors to give them the best chance at life as we can. We can only lead them to water. We can't make them drink it, but we can get them there. For that man to say those things, I don't even have words for it. With the current state of affairs um, here in Warren County, I strongly urge and I ask that you consider keeping our tax rate flat and not raising our taxes for yet another issue that, that we've known about since 2011 or 12. This is nothing new to us. Seven years have gone by, losing teachers each consecutive year. No one has done a thing about it. You all, are, you all personally are not to blame. There was board members before you. However, there are people that sit amongst this board that have been there through the past seven years, that have seen this trend continue and continue. I do agree that our teachers need competitive pay, and I want them to have competitive pay. I agree you as a governing body should do everything possible in your power to keep our teachers here. That tensure for the teachers is what is important to our students. For starters, you know, seven years ago, you, the board that set before you could have really started to see things folding when 30 teachers left. But what happened? We just continued to kick the, the can down the road. For what? For what? Here we are seven years later, and now we're up to 72 teachers. With no forethought or leadership coming from this board to this point other than let's raise taxes. I have a hard time with that. Mr. Science, I don't know you. I have no idea who you are. But I listened to your words, and I couldn't agree more. It ain't about the $184 or whatever it'll affect me. It's about the board diving into our finances, to your finances, to my finances, and making sure that they're not being mismanaged, making sure that we're, every dollar is accounted for, every single dollar. It's not that difficult unless the budget is just so blown up and out of proportion that you yourselves don't understand it. I challenge each of you to look to your left and right. The answers to our teachers' raises are to your left and right, ladies and gentlemen. It is not out here upon us. 
The burden should not fall upon the taxpayers until you all have rectified and checked your budget, rechecked it, and checked it again. And if you come to us at that point and say, we don't have the money, then I'll pay the $184. I have no problem with it. I urge you to hold Mr. Stanley and Mr. Drescher accountable, to hold them to task to find the money. They're the two agency heads. They are the two agency heads that overview. That's who you all trust as board members. That's who you look to. That's who you seek guidance from. Hold them accountable. There was no problem in mismanaging millions of our dollars. That happened very fast over a period of years. And nobody saw it. Hold them, them two accountable. I think it's a very small request to hold the county administrator and the school superintendent accountable and have them find the money to support our teachers. It is their job to find that money to support our teachers. This has been going on for seven years, almost a decade. That's embarrassing. Almost a decade. I could see if it happened last year. Almost a decade. Members of the board, Chairman Murray, there is no better time than now to vote no to this tax increase. There is no better time than now to lead this county and hold Doug Stanley and Greg Drescher accountable for making the much needed pay increase happen for our children. Put the burden on their shoulders. Don't put it on ours. As devastating as the last 45 days have been for our county, for, for several departments within our local government, including our wonderful sheriff's office, the simple act of voting no tonight will begin to bring faith, trust, accountability, and leadership back to our Board of Supervisors. That one vote of no will bring trust, faith, accountability, and leadership right back into this room. As a taxpaying citizen, Mr. Murray, I've heard your calls for service. You say, don't bring me a problem, bring me a solution. Don't just come to one meeting, come to them all. Pay attention to our budgets. Pay attention to our local government. Well, sir, I've answered your challenge. I'm not afraid to stand before you on this podium, ask the hard questions, and speak to each of you directly. I am a candidate for sheriff of this great county. I am a leader who will instill leadership and bring faith, trust, accountability, and leadership, not only to back to our local government, but to our sheriff's office. And I urge each of you tonight, when you take that vote, as Mr. Marlowe said, you have a very hard task. But every time you go to do business, Think of us, think of me, think of everybody that's sat in this room before you, and think of how am I going to bring faith, trust, accountability, and leadership back. If you vote on those four principles, you will win this fight. If you ignore them, this is only going to get worse. Thank you. Patrick Shelley. Patrick Skelly, Mosby Meadow Lane, Front Royal. Um, I've certainly heard some very well-reasoned arguments on both sides this evening. Um, I think I simply need to come down in support of the people who had the onerous burden of dealing with this situation, and that's each and every one of you. And I have to believe that each and every one of you is operating in good faith. I, I, I do believe that. I truly believe that. And I just want to lend my support to that and to you all, uh, believing that you're doing the best job that you know how to do. And given that, I want to speak in favor, much as I don't want to see my own personal taxes go up, I want to speak in favor of the increase. Thank you. Thank you. Connor Wright. Connor Wright, 102 Dale Court in Winchester. Ladies and gentlemen of the board, as well as Administrator Stanley, uh, I'm coming to you tonight, uh, and I thank you for this opportunity to speak before you. I come to speak on the low priority of public safety by the Board of Supervisors as a whole. Uh, while you 
while you're under fire for everything else, I figure what better time to come and address this. Year after year, budget requests come in from fire rescue asking for a decimal of what is actually needed to properly and adequately serve our community. This decimal is then torn apart each and every year by this very board approving only a percentage of that initial request. We operate on a game of chance each and every day. We wear the lowest bid protective equipment, out of date respiratory protective equipment, out of date tools, and we throw it all on a fire engine that at times can be held together with band-aids. This leads us to turning an already inherently dangerous and potentially deadly job into a game of Russian roulette each morning as we get out of bed to go to work. We're decades behind our neighboring departments in the level of service and the quality of service that we provide. We offer no annual physicals, whether it be NFPA compliant or any other uh, for our firefighters, no cancer screenings, while firefighters are twice, be it 50% more likely than the average person to be diagnosed with cancer resulting from an occupational exposure. 60% of firefighters are diagnosed with some form of cancer during their lifetime. Earlier this year, in the single digit block of Royal Lane while operating on what turned to be a fatal fire, a lieutenant initiating a search of the structure transmitted a mayday as he'd fallen through the floor and subsequently was rescued by other firefighters operating nearby. This was the second near miss incident in the County of Warren in the last five years. Statistics show that an average of 20 additional firefighters over a course of 45 minutes with four subsequent maydays are needed to rescue one firefighter. That's twice the daily staff that we have here in Warren County, as well as greater than the amount of personnel we have on the fire ground on our best of days. After seven years on the streets that I've spent as a firefighter EMT serving the community, I've seen the very beginnings and ends of life and very much in between. Looking around the room, I recognize several uh, groups who would be considered a risk factor and even on the very board before me. Some, maybe even one tonight, will need to dial those three digits. And I have to ask, are you feeling lucky? Will you be the number one caller that gets the only medic unit available that may be in the county? If not, what are you going to get? What provider are you going to get? Are you going to get our top-notch EMT firefighter? Or will you be getting an EMT provider who's been terminated or resigned to avoid discipline from another neighboring department that now works here? Because while our salary is comparable, it's not one that is compared to uh, and we get what we pay for at times. When our budget continues to fall behind, we will continue to struggle with recruitment and we will continue to recruit less than desirable employees. The best employees we have either leave for somewhere else that properly compensates them for their training, experience, and their wealth of knowledge. Others eagerly await retirement or look to go elsewhere that that employee who wishes to provide a higher level of service, such as take classes to become an advanced life support provider, or others will be encouraged and financed. I ask you as members of the board, as well as members of the community, uh, to consider the fire rescue requests in the budget, uh, that they are just a small percentage of what is actually needed to be on par with uh, our neighboring departments. And when that's picked apart, uh, and only a percentage of that is actually approved, it has to be looked at as if your life depends on it because although you may not see it right now when you get home tonight or when you wake up tomorrow morning when it's you that has to dial those numbers for either yourself or your loved one uh, you have to treat it as if your life depends on it because it very well may so i ask you all to consider that in this budget thank you ken rocco Supervisors, I, I'm, I thank you for the opportunity to talk. My first name is Kenneth, last name is Rocco. I live at 497 Forest Grove Road in Middletown. Um, a lot of good people have said a lot of interesting things. Uh, mixed bag, as they would say. Um, congratulations on your nomination. <laughs> um, I think it's important to understand that a few key words came up today that I think are important to con consider. Uh, accountability. Um, accountability, obviously, the, the, the cloud of the EDA has, 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 has caught, casts a big shadow on the performance of the supervisors. And I have to say, of the five of you, you're probably the most underpaid in this room because I have no idea what an hourly rate would be for you, but I think it's maybe about a quarter. 
um, of all the time that you put in. Um, but the problem with the EVA is actually the leadership that was part of that, that actually now EVA is responsible for increasing the economic base of the community, which then helps to reduce taxes. Therefore, hey, we've, forward, lost many, we've lost many years of uh, lost many years of potential increased business to keep the tax rate and maintain a, a, a good tax rate. That's that's, but we all make mistakes. We we know person we personalities are unpredictable when money is at stake, and when people have purse strings, you just don't really know. I'm sure we've all experienced that, either in our profession or in even in our families. Uh, but I do offer a challenge, though. First of all, I do approve the budget with this challenge, though, at the same time. Do you know that the budget here, I believe, equates to about $33 per student per calendar day? Okay, that's not a lot of money when you break it down into, you know, that kind of finite numbers. But it's actually, the education budget is 54% of the total budget, which means that 46% is a question, at least. Of, so if you took the uh, $53 million, that's a question, and you found 15% savings, that's $7.5 million. Okay, so if you save five, $7.5 million this calendar year, my guess is that you not only fund the tax increase for next year, but you also are able to subsidize 2.5 million of it for other activities that are in want, like the salary increases that we've talked about, the DSS issues. So I think it's a challenge that we as citizens want to say that we're here as professionals. We have a lot of talent in this room. So let us help you. Let us pass the budget, yes, but that doesn't mean you, you, you have to spend it, okay? It means that we can find ways to help you manage and cut costs and save the dollars that we're talking about. So we're playing catch up, yes, but it, with the promise that we may be able to prevent taxing, uh, a property tax increase next year, okay, and also take care of the problems that we've identified. But I appreciate it. I think everybody here has the town and the future of the town at heart, and that's all we can ask. Right, thank you. Joe Biggs and Linda Holtzapple. My name is Joe Biggs, and I live at um, 164 Gravestone Drive in Belmont. I'll be very brief. I'm here on behalf of the uh, Center on Aging. Uh, we at SAA appreciate your service to the county. Each one of you does a wonderful job in my estimation. We also appreciate your continuing support, which is essential to our mission to provide services for the needy Warren County senior citizens. Your funding is critical to us to continue these vital services. Our request is that you do not cut our funding. We look forward to working with you and appreciate your consideration of our funding request. Thank you for your time and letting me speak. George McIntyre. We're going to have fun yet. Uh, my name is George McIntyre, 457 Milldale Road, Front Royal. Um, this has been a real eye opener for me coming to this meeting, and I'm glad I did because I think what I see is um, a wonderful representation of what is in Warren County as far as this uh, audience here and our officials up here. What bothers me, of course, is some of the uh, words that were exchanged and the way it was handled, and I'm disappointed in that because like a teacher, I've always 
kind of looked at the people around me in our business as an example for others to follow. And I've been an active local <laughs> participant in a lot of things for, for a long time. And um, we have a business that, that just thrives on working with others and helping the community. What I hear tonight is, uh, you know, when I heard people like John Marlowe and a lot of us, a lot of us have been there and done that. A lot, of us, a lot of us have been and done what you do. And we understand the complexities of making decisions, good, bad, or indifferent. And fortunately, we didn't have to put up with some of the uh, personal attacks that you all receive in the past. We've never, I've never experienced that. And I'm glad we didn't because you have a really, really tough job. You were elected or hired by this board, but you were elected by the people in this room. And there are mistakes that have been made. Many, I don't, I mean, I don't like to hear about them. You don't like to hear about them, but they're there. And you want to learn from what these people said what they see as mistakes and address them. Don't just put it aside, okay, we got that budget stamped and go on. I am for the budget, the way it's presented. And I believe that <clears throat> it can be worked out if you move forward with three things, character, leadership, and discipline. Those are three words that you as elected officials should live by in performing your job. And my mother used to tell me something. I didn't believe everything mom said. <laughs> she knows that, but she knew that. But mom always used to say, <clears throat> when I was little, she'd say, you know, son, sticks and stones will break your bones, but words will never hurt you. Well, she lied <laughs> because those words... You don't want to hear them, they don't want to hear them, our kids don't want to hear them, our grandchildren don't want to hear them. We want the best for this community that we can have. And we have gained so much in the last 44 years, 53, 54 years since I've moved here. We've gained so much, so many good things. And when I listened to all the numbers being tossed around and the other things, I heard one thing. And that was that Richmond or Washington, they're not giving us the support. You know, it's hard for us. We have to, we have to work in this community for ourselves. And it makes it harder on us. So, yeah, when you vote, most of you probably don't want to run again, but, and I wouldn't blame you, but when we vote on a national basis, do something about it, because it makes a difference. You know, don't stand there and pick your nose and say, I didn't do anything or I can't help. Do something about it. The other thing I want the people in this room to know, based on experience, is that no matter how hard, difficult, mean, short-sighted, underhanded this may seem, in all those big words, I look forward and I just spoke to a dear friend about this. <clears throat> Look for the day when you go home and you don't have to talk about this crap. Because that's what it's all about. It's crap. You don't want to deal with it. You know, we don't want to deal with it. They don't want to deal with it. So get, up, get on with it. Put your big girl pants on or your big boy pants on and do what you're supposed to do and change the things that haven't worked and make the things that we have to have to continue to make this community strong move ahead. Thank you. By the way, Ms. Mount, thank you for what you said. I wish we had more employees like that that believed in this. Thank you. Linda McDonough. I'm Linda McDonough. I live at 1205 High Top Road, Linden, Virginia. And um, 
This is not the first time that I've been to a public hearing over the budget. This is not the first time that there's been a crowd of people like this um, here. Um, it's not the first time that you always use the schools and the officers and the um, firemen and all that as the people and the elderly that you guys, that's always what you guys go for. Um, and when I was here at the last budget meeting, I referenced about um, term limits. And I understand that, yes, you guys have term limits, but I'm talking about term limits where you only get to serve as a board of supervisors only two and possibly three terms and then let other people get in there instead of holding these areas hostage and running un un unencumbered um, is absolutely ridiculous. It's 2019. We should not have anything like that going on in our county. I am not for the tax increase. I'm not for the Shenandoah Farms increase. I'm not for the electric increase either. And I think that one reason why it is that the state and the um, federal government doesn't give us the money that we used to get is because you're collecting more taxes. So we've become into a new tax bracket. That, those are one of the reasons why that um, we're not getting the help that we used to uh, from the county. And I don't really appreciate, when I get up here and I talk, I'm speaking for myself. If I have other constituents that have requested me to come up and are on the same wavelength that I am, um, I have their permission to say that. I understand about Robert's rules of order, um, I have spoke to a couple of the different board members about Robert's Rules of Order. I understand about the public hearing. It is not a question and answer period. But there has been times that after the public hearing is over and you allow the supervisors or Mr. Stanley to make comments, um, it should, under Robert's Rules of Order, give us the right to respond back uh, because that is the way Robert's Rules of Order work. And I don't appreciate anybody sitting there uh, accusing um, people here of being bullies. I have not ever been a bully. Okay, maybe I have four brothers, so I could possibly be a bully at times. But I do try to always be honest and open, and I will um, turn the other cheek until I can't anymore. And um, so I am looking into term limits. I am not uh, for only two to three terms per supervisor or any elected official. Same with who you appoint, because a lot of these committees and stuff, they are appointed by the Board of Supervisors. And um, a lot of people have been on these committees, and there are conflicts of interests from committees to um, property owners association committees and um, we have all of these cross things going on which um, just shouldn't be happening. Um, even advisory boards, our Shenandoah Farms um, that you all took the money away from and you don't, now you take care of our lakes, you do the mowing, you do everything for and then taking care of our roads and all that kind of stuff. The advisory board of Shenandoah Farms is the, is the same board that you guys took the money away from because there was no accountability. And we did have a budget at that time of at least 500000 which I know it's more now because ever since you took it over, every year you've been raising our sanitary districts. All four road revenue shop share projects which I will be bringing in more information of the pilot projects that we did in Shenandoah Farms um, of the paving, and it is a fraction of what it costs for the, for the road revenue share projects. And that, oh, we'll never have to pay for it. We'll know, oh, it's all gonna be taken care of. No, now we have to contract the snow removal and all of that, and it's just absolutely, completely ridiculous. And I've been coming here a long time, maybe not every meeting. I've been at the 
meetings in the back room and everything year after year after year. And this is not any different. When something happens, you guys want to raise our taxes, the rooms are filled. It's just not every time. And you guys are the ones that chose to be a public servant, to be in these positions, just like in Congress and the Senate and the President. They've all chosen to do this. So however it is that your constituents get up here and want to choose the way that they are putting on how upset they are or whatever it is that they're for, then um, you guys should take it because this is what you chose to do as being a public servant. And I'm do, again, I am not for the tax um, increase because it's the same old thing. Let's take it from the kids, the elderly, the fire department, all of it. Every year, it's the same thing. We need a change. Thank you very much. Bob Cullors. My name is uh, Bob Cullors. I live at 147 Bluff Road, midway between Strasburg and Front Royal. And uh, I'm chairman of the advisory board for the Department of Social Services. I want to thank you guys and gal for your time and your effort and your service in what is a uh, stringent situation. Hang in there. We've heard a lot about uh, teachers, and firemen, and nurses, uh, and policemen. I want to try and be a voice this evening for the 20% of our population that usually has no voice at all. For the physically challenged, the mentally challenged, the sick, the senior citizens, the indigent. Um, the 20% of our population that live below the poverty level. <laughs> The current census shows that uh, we currently have, let's see, uh, 33,000, I'm sorry, the, the current population of the county is 39,563. Last year, the Department of Social Services served 8,899 individuals in this county, nearly 20% of the population. And many of those individuals had several cases. It included 835 children that we had to investigate for abuse and neglect. And those services uh, are, are extensive. You have to interview and investigate each case. In many cases, we have to accompany them to courts. We have to provide foster care, and many times the social services workers take care of these children in their own homes. Um, early this year, we had 12 vacancies out of 44 positions. Why did we have those vacancies? Well, because of the eight surrounding counties, we are the second lowest average employee salaried uh, group. Uh, for example, Shenandoah County's employees' salaries average are 14% higher than ours. Uh, Winchester is 20% higher. Frederick County is 35% higher. And Manassas County is nearly 65% higher. Uh, due to stringent regulations for state and federal, it takes two years to train a social services worker. We train them for two years, and they immediately leave us and go to one of the adjoining counties for a higher salary. In several cases, they haven't even lasted the two years before they left. Uh, we have replaced 10 of those 12 vacancies, and all of the new employees are younger employees, most of them with families, 
and with no social services training. So that's what happens. Um, at this meeting last month, a teacher talked about having to uh, go to work at 6 o'clock to prepare for the teaching day and teaching all day. And then she had to take some children to various places. Then she had to appear before you at your 7 o'clock meeting. And she didn't get home to her children until 9.30. Well, ironically, on that very same night, a 14-year-old runaway foster child suddenly appeared. And social services had to have several employees take care of that child overnight. And then they had to try to find foster care for him. And the good news is that a lot of the foster care parents in this country have adopted their foster care children. So now we have no foster care parents. And in severe cases, these children have to be transported out of the county. Uh, in the case of that 14-year-old runaway, the nearest place they could put him was outside of Richmond. Uh, this is what we're facing. Social services workers are a rare breed. It's one of the lowest paying professions that exists. Uh, the firemen and the policemen and the nurses and the teachers have regular hours, regular schedules. The social services workers are on call 24 hours a day, seven days a week because tragedies and emergencies don't happen during normal working hours. Uh, the jobs is very stressful. They're working with problem, working solely with problems and many times with problem people. Uh, the burnout rate is very high. A mugger accosted a social worker uh, in the Walmart parking lot and he yelled at her, your money or your life? And she thought for a moment and she said, I'm sorry, I'm a social worker. I have no money and no life. <laughs> but you are in a position to do something about that, to help alleviate that problem. Right now, our nation, the stock market is almost at its peak, despite what happened yesterday. Uh, we have the highest employment rate in decades. Um, the income gap between the richest 10% and the poorest 60% is the greatest it's been since slavery. So you're in a position to do something about it. And will you kick the can down the road like the federal government? Or we're sure you'll make the proper decision. John Vance. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, members of the board, uh, like Mr. Marlowe, I have sat in those seats and if I'm not mistaken, quite literally in those same chairs, probably. Um, I know the kind of mental anguish that you go through when these budgets occur, because from the year 2000 to the end of the year 2005, I was a member of the Board of Supervisors, and I know how seriously we took each and every budget and each and every budget request. Uh, it's a difficult job. Um, no one really likes their taxes raised, but everybody wants better pay for teachers and firemen and uh, parks and rec people and sanitation workers and you name it, everybody wants an increase. And you can't really blame them because the cost of living has gone up. It costs more to run your automobile, it costs more to run the county vehicles. In, in the same way. However, um, there's, there's two words I have not heard tonight, 
And one of them is brevity, and if you know me at all, you know I, it's very difficult for me to be brief. But I'm going to be as brief as I can, given, given the consideration for the hour at this point. Um, the other one is retention. And we, 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 we skirted around it a lot with, with respect to teachers and everybody else who's leaving for greener pastures. But, we, but retention is, is a real serious word. And, and we do need to do uh, everything we can to keep uh, all of our uh, well-trained uh, employees without regard to what, uh, how they serve this county. Um, that's, uh, I'm, I'm giving up most of what I wrote because it's all been said half a dozen times and, and, and much of it uh, extremely well-meaning. I am in support of the budget. I'm also in support of, as the year goes on, if you can find places where you don't need to spend money, as we did when I was back on the board members, if we found a way not to spend it, then we didn't. Uh, try to do that, okay? And, and when I was on the board, I was accused almost every year of looking to the future. But I submit to you, that's what, you, that's what your job really is. You have to look down the road, not five years, not 10 years, more than that. And how do we, how do we set up uh, everything in this county so that 10 years from now or 20 years from now, we're in good shape. Back in 05, we bought uh, the park. And it's, it's becoming a very nice park. And I made a comment then, I said 50 years from now, everybody on this board is going to be dead and gone. But the citizens of this county are going to say, boy, that was a smart bunch of guys back in Odd Five, wasn't it? Okay, you have to plan for the future. You have to look down the road. And I think passing this budget is, is part of that. Thank you very much. Amber Morris. Good evening, Amber Morris, 3574 Houseville Road. I'm gonna take a breath because it's been a long night and it's past my bedtime, so bear with me. Like many others here, I brought some typed up words with a script to speak, but I think everything's been covered from reasons to raise the taxes and reasons to not raise the taxes. But I'm gonna ask once more that you vote to freeze the budget. And I ask that because I have been studying the county budget for weeks on top of my full-time job, on top of three kids and a nonprofit organization, I have been picking up the slack where some of the supervisors have not been studying the budget to make educated votes. So in regards to this, um, I think that all current county projects need to be stopped and put on a freeze until the budget is balanced. I think Warren County needs to sell off some of the properties that we own or the ones that we're not effectively utilizing. I think the library budget needs to be reviewed. And Tom, you're my supervisor, and I think that you have the oversight over that. I've been in a financial industry my entire adult profession, and there are not many corporations, even financial corporations, that are matching each of their employees at 4% for their retirement. I think that's very um, generous. And with all due respect, while I understand that our teachers deserve a raise, there are gentlemen in the back of the room wearing bulletproof vests that are making 15000 a year, less than a starting teacher in Warren County. So you have a teacher making forty five to 55000 as their first year in Warren County, and you have a deputy wearing bulletproof vests that are protecting the children in those schools making $35,000 a year. I have an issue with that. I would also like to urge each of you as a mother with three children who love the outdoors to analyze the parks and recreation portion of the budget. Tony, I know that's you. If we're going to spend the amount of money that we're spending on parks and recreational use facilities, it would be nice to be able to utilize them as such. Currently, when we go to the park, we have to tiptoe through the grass in a desperate attempt to not step on the dirty needles. And we also can't enjoy a picnic at the picnic tables at any of the parks because there are homeless people utilizing these picnic tables as their beds. 
Which brings me to my next comments. The proposed budget cuts by some of the board members have been targeted towards outside agencies. While I am physically conservative myself and I'm in agreement that you have to take care of yours first, I believe some of the county employees are more than taken care of. The proposed cuts to the Shenandoah Area Agency on Aging that have been mentioned, Northwestern Community Services, the Blue Ridge Opportunities does not help build or grow or implement a positive environment for our community, which in a time like now when it is so negative and there is no faith in our leadership, there is no worse time to cut some of those detrimental programs, whether they're outside agencies or not. With this fix to keep the tax rate flat, you're not only giving a small portion of the teachers a raise, you're also making a detrimental impact into the county's foster children, the mentally ill, the recovering addicts, the physically handicapped, and the elderly. This is simply stated preying on the most vulnerable people and the most vulnerable, vulnerable places in Warren County. I want more than anything to help Warren County thrive. I love where I live. I was born and raised here. If anything, these people that were born and raised here and my neighbors should be fighting hard. And I thank everybody that's come out and spoke tonight. Um, cutting funding to the most dire needs is not something that a conservative like myself can be proud of or support. And I know you guys have a hard decision. I've been in politics since before I was old enough to vote. And um, often tax increases and in budgets become emotional and not logical. And if you vote against a tax increase, you don't support teachers, you don't support firefighters, you don't support police officers, when it's nothing further than the truth. It has to be logical. It has to be, um, you have to be able to, to justify your vote. So I ask each of you, and specifically my supervisor, Tom, whether you vote in favor of this tax increase or you vote opposed to this tax increase, I hope that you can say that you've justified your vote and that you've studied the budget as hard as I have. And um, I agree that we need a line-by-line -line budget item. As much as I've studied it, there's still much unknown to all of us. And I thank you all for your service. I know you're not in an easy position tonight. And I just hope that you will use this as a stepping stone for leadership in this desperate time in our community. Thank you. Chris Humanic. Uh, thank you guys for letting me speak. And Everyone who's still here, it's late night for everybody. Um, <clears throat> I just want to start by referencing the earlier comments about school resource officers or SRO, SROs is probably what I'll call them. Um, I can promise you the day you take them out of the schools is the day that I will leave this county and go screaming with every other parent to take their children with them. I opened up my news feed during this meeting, like some of you, and uh, took a look at the horrific things that happened in Colorado today at a school. And the pictures I saw are elementary school kids running out of schools, covering their heads in the midst of EMT and police people. I want our SORs in our building. They need to be there. Please don't ever, ever take that away from our kids, our community, our teachers, and everyone. It's vitally important. <clears throat> um, several of my community members have referenced some uh, pretty great ideas, actually, and alternatives to raising teacher pay. I'm all for exploring those. I think they're fantastic ideas. Reductions to our uh, benefits would be fantastic. My family plan costs me just slightly under $900 a month, um, which is an overwhelmingly significant amount of my total pay. Um, fortunately, my wife and I both work here. So we both get two credits from the county. So the actual effect on me is not that significant. But for someone who has one member here, it's, it's abysmal. Um, so yes, very open to exploring those options. Think they're great ideas. I um, <clears throat> also echo that if the uh, EMT, firefighters, our senior citizens, our Department of Social Services, or any of those other vital services are at risk, then they are equally as important as the conversation I'm about to have. I don't have the knowledge, expertise, or have done the research to speak on their behalf, but they absolutely must be funded fully. All right, 
A month ago, I stood here and presented a plethora of reasons as to why Warren County teachers, such as myself, uh, deserve a pay raise. I've heard the reasons of my fellow community members for why we should not. Some of those I find to be fantastic. Some I find to be baseless, frankly. Um, but one of the truest was that if money can be found elsewhere, it should. Um, and I support that. If there is money that we can reasonably and responsibly take from other places that does not put our vulnerable citizens at risk, we absolutely should explore that fully <coughs> and exhaustively. If taxes is the only recourse we have, then I fully support that as well. And that is as a Warren County, count, Warren County resident, I'm sorry, it's getting late, I forgot to say it, 345 McDonald's Farm Road, sorry. <laughs> I started rolling and went, <laughs> sorry. Uh, yeah, that's where I live. Um, so yes, I understand I would pay more taxes. I understand that would negatively affect the pay raise for me and in some way, shape, or form defeat some of it. But I also understand that every single year, I'll walk back into my building and have to play who the heck are you uh, with 15 people who are my peers. That's not a fun game. And my kids want answers. Who's this person? I don't know them. And they're great people. Some of our new teachers we've hired in the past two or three years are some of our hardest working teachers. Uh, Mr. Turner, who was here earlier, I'll mention him by name, I am confident puts in more hours than any educator I have or will ever meet. The fact that he actually left school to come to this meeting is astounding. So we do have great teachers at each end. Um, but we have to fund them, is what it comes down to. Where that comes from is up to you. If it has to be taxes for now, fine. And if it has to be taxes, then I think it's a reasonable request of every citizen in this room in this county to demand more clarity and accountability from all of you in that regard. I think that's a fair trade. I've also heard some concerning comments um, about teachers and how we used to care and be passionate. Um, I'm not sure what we are, if not that, especially those of us who are still here. Um, we love your children every single day, and it's not easy some days, I promise you, um, and some days it's the best. We love them every day. We care for them immensely. There is nothing aside from my family that I hold more sacred than my students. Um, they, they are my world. I spend more time with them than my family. Um, so to accuse me or my fellows of not caring and not being passionate is distasteful at best and cowardly, I think, to come up here and do. Um, when you fund experienced teachers, you get pillars, you get generational relationships, and you get the history and culture of your community preserved. That's what we do for you. Aside from educating your students, you have heard the stat about teachers of 10 years or more, increased test scores and all that other stuff. That's a very fancy metric. Um, I want my kids to do well on tests and all that stuff, but personally, I care a lot more about everything else that goes into it. So I'm happy that we do that, but more so, I'm happy to see our experienced, committed teachers making that investment in your students and building that relationship. I had a lot more stuff written, but I'll just end with this. Uh, those relationships have significant lasting impacts. One of my students who graduated a couple of years ago from Warren County is in the Special Forces. One of the first things he does anytime he gets back to a point where he can message me is sends me an abysmally lame joke, but also thanks me because there are very few people who still respond to him. There are very few people who still talk to him. And he has a hard time maintaining real human relationships because of what he goes through and is asked to do for our country. One of those relationships happens to be me, a teacher. But I am not alone. Many teachers in this county have many relationships like that with many of your children. We maintain them and care for them. Please vote yes for this. Please be more responsible and accountable going forward. Please be more clear and open with us as a populace but we have to fund teachers in schools. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, there's no one signed up else. Is there anyone else? Come forward, please. Steve Culler, 1605 Rocky Hollow Road. Uh, I've heard a lot of people speak up here tonight, and yes, I want the teachers to have raised. I'm not sure you shouldn't do the whole coot the boot all the way down, all of them. But I have a hard time, and I, I know a lot of you guys that wasn't forced on it, but I have a hard time seeing that golf course out there, and you tell me you can't give the teachers a raise. That needs to go. If somebody made a somebody made a agreement that you ought to do it, then whatever agreement needs to be undone, but that is a waste of, of taxpayers' money. And 
that needs to go. Um, and then, then I think everybody would be glad if you do stuff, get rid of stuff like that, that is just a drain on the, the county, then whatever it takes to get these teachers up to par, we need. I got grandkids. I want to see them get a good education. But I, when I look over and see that golf course, I'm like, why are we in a golf course business? There's three others right here within driving distance. So, and I know, to give you all credit, I know a lot of that was maybe forced on it before you all came on the board but it needs to be reversed and whatever. If you got to give the land back, give it back to them. But it's just a waste of money. And I, that, I think that's where everybody's coming from. Just about everybody that spoke tonight is they don't mind seeing the teacher, but we need to look at some of these other things too. Thank you. My name is Dr. Tom Pattison, 921 Ashby Station Road. Uh, I'll promise to be brief and I'll throw away my notes as well and I'll promise to, to not uh, lecture, showboat, and I won't announce for office. Uh, having said that, uh, I do think there's been good points on both sides tonight and uh, I'm not going to reiterate uh, all of the reasons that the teachers leaving, etc. A couple of things though that haven't been considered is that when you have an uh, experienced teacher to keep the kids in school more. And when you have dropouts, nobody said anything about that. They frequently are unemployed. They take resources from the community, they, <clears throat> uh, from social services, et cetera. And worst, in, worst case of all, they become incarcerated and that costs the county a lot of money. There's, in addition to that, I have to say a couple of words about industry. The first thing that the company, companies looking at the county have to, to know is that there's a good educational system. That's their first priority. The second one is the, is the hospital and medical system. And these are the two most important things. If you don't have them, you lose a lot of people. So I think that we know that uh, not only is industry that can give us good jobs, they can help keep our uh, children here in the county and to provide uh, employment. They can provide employment for those that are going down 66 and driving every day and have a better quality of life, I would say. In addition to that, uh, I think that uh, they keep the tax rate lower for everybody when you have a good paying industry. And that's one of the goals. I want to <clears throat> say one other thing, and that is obviously education of the offspring of the people coming in is important, but they also want to know about workforce availability, the skills of the people in the workforce, and employee and workforce training that's available. And that can be not just in the county school system, but with community colleges and stuff that's like that. I really would say that I would completely agree with Mr. John Marlowe and also with General Hobgood. I think they summed up things very well. And there are a lot of other good comments from everybody uh, here, both, both uh, ways. And I asked you for the long-term viability of the community that you fully fund the educational budget and do what you feel is necessary as far as raising taxes. Thank you.